time to weave a lampshade. I've been asked many times how to weave lampshades and abajures. However, a lampshade made of paper and an electric lamp seemed incompatible to me. It is energy-saving lamps, not heating up, that made me think of making a paper abajur. Actually, I've been pushed by an order to weave three lampshades. I already mentioned it on the forum and shared my thoughts. In the process of working, some additional ideas have occurred to me, so I'd like to share them with you including one special idea waiting for you in the end of tutorial. Let me tell you some backstory. My first lampshade looked a bit funny. Actually, I was asked uh, to make a pumpkin-shaped abajur. So I've experimented with different shapes and sizes I felt like trying to apply this type of open work. I like it. However, I've realized that there was too much solid weaving, so I've taken my mistakes into account and chosen the best size and shape. Let me show you what I use as a base. It is not perfectly comfortable because it doesn't stand. I have to hold it in my hands while weaving, but the size of the bowl is right what I need it. About 40 centimeters, almost 16 inches in diameter. So I did find the bowl of the required size, but unfortunately there, was, uh, there were some hollows on the surface I had to get rid of. As usual, I made use of advertising papers. I crumpled them like this and adjourned to the hollows I had to mask. As a result, I've got a more or less smooth form. I've stuck stuck the paper with the help of construction tape, as well I rounded the top a little. So now I can use this base for weaving bread beans as well. There is also an obligatory condition for a lampshade. It must let light through. This lampshade is not meant for a night bed lamp, but for a cafe where some soft scattered lighting is required. So I've decided from the very beginning that my lampshades are going to be open work, but because it's rather boring to be one and the same lace all the time, I've gone into detail of mesh patterns. I found a lot of interesting details. As you know, Natalia Sorokina is a recognized mistress of open work. While weaving these lampshades, I've already used uh, two of her patterns found on Stranomastero. I will share the link. As for the third lampshade, we are going to weave it using the pattern I've learned from Natalia Sorokina as well. Thanks a lot to her. So let's start weaving. First of all, we have to weave a regular round bottom. I've been asked to make lampshades of natural looking colored oils I like, so I've painted the tubes colorant with primer mixed with water. This time I've made the tubes of newspaper. Here are my moistened short newspaper tubes prepared for weaving. I've connected them by two in lengths. In order to weave and shape such a hole at the same time, I've connected the tubes with the help of dragon glue. 
As a rule, if there is no special responsibility required, I use cool glue, but if my tubes are to be subject to stronger shaping, I prefer using dragon glue. As you know, water-based cool glue makes the tubes too soft, so if I'm going to twist and bend the tubes too much, dragon glue is very useful. This secret has been stolen from Natalia Sorokina as well. So we make a regular round bottom with no complications. A cross down and another cross above and start weaving a round bottom. So we are weaving a regular round bottom. Weave the first two rows in the technique of rope hugging four tubes each time. Then we divide them into groups of two and weave four rows more, after which we pass on to twining each single tube separately around. So this way we are weaving a regular round bottom. I mentioned the primer I've been using to paint the tubes lately. The key feature of the primer is as follows. It is a reinforcing deep acrylate based primer for external and internal works. I purchased the cheapest primer and as well universal paste colorants by the same manufacturer. I made a kind of cocktail of these ingredients. It's hard to tell you the exact ratio. I was just mixing and dipping the tubes into the mixture and as a result I've got the oozier like color. So weave four rows, hugging couples of tubes and then pass on to hugging each single tube separately. I still have to weave five rows more but before passing on to open work part I fix the weaving to the base. This moment requires some effort. Actually, I just tie it with the help of a thin elastic. We are going to weave over the elastic and before finishing we will untie it. I wrap a few layers of elastic around the form in order to fix the bottom. So I fix the bottom to the base and continue weaving nearly in a suspended position. The elastic is thin so it will not interfere with our working. We will already apply this technique while weaving a bread bean. I lengthen the tubes as I usually do, from the wrong side behind the pole. Continue weaving up to the diameter of about 14 cm, 5.5 inches. 5 .5. I still have to weave three more rows. So I wove 10 rows, 14 cm in diameter. It is going to be the top of our lampshade. I've tucked the tails of the working tubes in. Afterwards I'm going to cut them. Now there is an interesting point. We are passing on to lace weaving. Experienced weavers know very well how to do it. Let me tell how I do it for the beginners. At first it seemed to me that such bailing tape could help me a lot. I did try in hopes that I could finally solve my problems, but it has turned out that problems are not solved, quite the opposite. 
Such stripes made of soft cardboard are much better. For example, you can cut them of chocolate boxes or a piece of cardboard from a package of pantyhose. So I've cut one and a half centimeter wide stripes of different lengths because boxes and pieces of cardboard were of different size. Actually, I wanted an integral stripe, but when I applied it, it has turned out that short stripes are much easier to take out afterwards. Insert a stripe like this, start weaving and twine around the stripe in the process of weaving. As you see, stripes are reusable, it's very convenient. It is one of those points where dragon glue is very helpful. In order to keep weaving smooth and equal, I stick tubes to the poles with the help of this glue. It is very convenient to finish the row in the same point. So stick the tubes, try to hold the pole straight and start enlacing, resting on the cardboard stripes. If the stripe goes beneath or over two poles, for example, it's ok. Our goal is to keep the interval one and a half centimeter. The softer the cardboard stripe is, the easier it is working with it. Even if it bends at some point, that's ok. Continue weaving following the same principle. After having woven four rows on this small experimental lampshade, I've realized that four meshes are not enough. So I decided to make them twice more, taking into account bigger size. So I've got eight meshes. So we continue weaving a mesh. First of all, it's rather fast. You do understand, every time you indent one and a half centimeters, so weaving only eight rows doesn't take much time at all. Lancing neatly. And continue weaving. So, here we have reached the beginning of the row. Here is the first tube fixed and here is the second one. We need to fix it. So finish the row in the same very way with the help of dragon glue as neatly as you can. Sometimes I help myself with a closer spin. You can press the point of glue in with a closing clip for a few minutes. Dragon glue takes very fast. Meanwhile, you can start the next row. So, following the same principle, we weave seven rows. After the eighth one, we pass on to a compact, non mesh pattern again. Weave 8 rows of such mesh pattern. Now, after having woven 8 rows, you can take out a form.
so we've got a kind of semi hem semisphere. Take elastics out accurately. I don't take the stripes out so far. I'm going to only after I finish the top. Now I have to weave a few more rolls. After which I'm going to taper the shape. It's time to lengthen the poles. So I'm going to weave two rows in the technique of row, lengthen the poles at the same time. After which eight up to ten rows will be narrowing the shape. Then follows aging. Only after having fixed the top, I'm going to take the stripes out. You'd better don't, don't take them away until that, because the weaving is rather loose, especially in the widest part, and you can shift the rows while working. That's why I leave the stripes in work so far. So let's weave a rope and lengthen the poles. <laughs> 